What's up everyone, this is John with Skate Better, and today we are doing the Adidas Copa Nacional shoe review. I just wanted to say thank you for being patient. I know it's been a while since I've posted anything. The reality is I've just been really busy with work. And also I wanted to make sure I gave these shoes enough time to thoroughly review them well, just like everything else. I also wanted to make sure that I was separating the shoe versus the new deck setup I got. As some of you know, if you watch my videos, I did get the shoe the same time that I got the weekend deck and I loved the deck so much. And I was feeling like I loved the shoe so much and I wanted to give it at least a few months to make sure that it was really just the deck or really just the shoe so I could identify what was going on and what was helping me enjoy my experience a little bit more. But yeah, so that's pretty much why I waited, but thank you all for being patient, you're the best. And uh, we're gonna get into the shoe. So the first thing is why the shoe and the price? Well, I picked up this shoe, I actually didn't pick up the shoe. <laughs> my wife got me this shoe for Christmas. I think it's like 85, 90 bucks. You might be able to find it on sale in the 70s now, especially some of the older colorways but I know that the new ones are still like 90 bucks. So not the cheapest shoe on the market, but not the most expensive. And the reason I picked it up is I love cup soles. I've been wanting to skate more cup soles. This was a cup sole shoe. And I've also seen a lot of pro skaters wearing it, like John Delo, he skates in it all the time. I've just seen a lot of people skate it and I was really curious. It seemed to have a narrow toe also, which I like because I have sort of a narrow foot, but I'll get into that in a minute. So next thing on the list to discuss is the size. I ordered my normal size eight and a half and it fits perfectly. So I would say just get the size that you normally skate in and hopefully you'll be good to go. Next thing I wanna talk about is the shape of the shoe and just kinda of like the general shape. So I'd say it has a pretty average shape for a skate shoe. It's a little bit on the narrow side though. So if you've skated the Adidas 3ST003s, which are the ones with the little ollie pad here, very similar shape to that. I'm trying to think of what else it would be comparable to. Like any of these slimmer Adidas shoe models, I feel like this one is pretty similar to. It's definitely a little bit more narrow than like a Vans or something like that if you're interested. So just keep in mind, it's on the slimmer side. It does have a little bit um, of room here if you have a wider foot, but then it gets a little bit narrower at the toe. So I think narrow to medium foot and you'll be fine. If you have a wider foot, this might not be your favorite shoe. The breaking time for this shoe is the next thing I wanna talk about. I will be honest, this shoe took forever to break in or what seemed to be like forever. I remember straight out of the box, you know, the leather material itself was super rigid and stiff. And then additionally, this was also very stiff, the sole of the shoe. I'll say I've been skating it for a month and a half, close to two months now, and this has definitely gotten a lot flimsier, but from here back, similar to the some other shoes that I've skated in the past, it's really solid and rigid and it has almost no flexibility at all. So like the heel feels like stone, like it's really, really, one of the most solid heels actually. But anyways, super, super solid heel. And the leather up here, did break in, but it took about, I'd say an honestly four to five sessions before I actually felt it started break in. I, I just thought it wasn't gonna break in. After the third session, I was like, oh, they're just gonna be stiffer shoes. But actuality, it does break in. It just took a lot longer. Now it actually feels great. The leather feels amazing. This, this all up here, money. This feels really, really good now when I skate, but I will say it's still a little bit more rigid back here than I would personally prefer, so. Next thing I wanna talk about is durability and comfort of the shoe. So for a $90 shoe, there's not a crazy amount of bells and whistles, but there are some cool features that really helped me with my skating. The first thing is the heel tap. So this is actually, I would say, the highest heel tap I've ever skated in a shoe. And if you see, it's slightly angled forward. So that definitely helped to keep my foot feel secure. It felt really locked in and safe, which I loved. But because it's like a weird slick leather material, I had really, really bad blisters in the back of my heel. Uh, even with socks, it just like, I had really bad blisters. I always wear socks, but man, I don't know what's going on, but just prepare for blisters, I guess, if you're gonna wear the shoe, or at least for me, that was my experience, both out here and then also in the toe of the shoe a little bit. So once it breaks in, it's fine after a few weeks, but that was the thing. So the tongue is another interesting feature on this shoe. It doesn't have any elasticity to hold it in place that I can see, but it doesn't really move around at all. It's like a really, really wide tongue. It goes like all the way over to the sides. And it also has this little like, uh, I don't know if you call that like a divot or like a dip in the middle. And that kind of hugs the front of your shin in place. So it feels like you have a lot of mobility in the shoe that way. I didn't personally enjoy this. I didn't personally love the tongue. I would have liked a tongue that came up a little bit higher 
and then have some cushioning underneath. So just know that this tongue has almost zero padding, like I'm feeling in it right now. There's a little bit more padding as you go further down, like in this area, but up in the top, it's like really, really thin, almost like a quilt, like if a leather was made into a quilt, like a thin quilt, that's what it feels like. But in my opinion, it's not really anything to brag about. I would not call it a padded tongue by any means. So that's pretty much it for comfort. I would say durability wise, the shoe is a beast. So similar to the last leather Adidas I skated, it is holding up really well. There is wear and tear here in the normal Ollie spot. There is wear and tear here in my kickflip and also my Ollie spot. But this leather piece that wraps around is holding up really, really well. It almost barely looks like anything's happened. I think because it's so flush with the leather, I end up flicking more off of this part of the shoe than I do this part of the shoe. But um, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but the flick seems to be holding up really well. I will say this at the toe end of the shoe, there's like this little flap over here that has some stitching and that is pretty much all gone away. <laughs> so I've lost that, but it does seem like there's extra something underneath there that holds this in, that molds this into place underneath. So it still feels like it's gonna be fine. But other than that, the shoe's in great condition. I know it looks really beat up because it's white, but just know that it's skating really well. I feel like after two months, it's finally starting to break in to the perfect amount. Last thing about durability I almost forgot to mention is just the sole. The sole is holding up really, really well. Better than the Vans, the Aves, better than a lot of Adidas shoes that I've skated in the past. I don't know why, but for some reason, this tread pattern is working for me. So it does feel a little bit slippery if I'm pushing on a slippery part, but no more so or less so than like the Vans or anything else that I've skated. I feel like, especially on the board, it has great grip. I definitely dig in the tread on this shoe and that can make or break. So that's also definitely a pro. Next thing I'll talk about is impact, but I'm not gonna spend too long on the impact because there's not too much to discuss. Um, scale of one to 10, I give it a six, maybe a seven with insoles. I didn't jump down anything too crazy. I did do some early grabs off of some stuff and it held up just fine. I would say that the impact felt better than the Vans, but maybe not as much as the City Cups that were before this. It feels like a cup sole, it acts like a cup sole, it has a good amount of cushioning, so it doesn't come with a really big thick insole, but once again, it's a cup sole, so it has that extra support. And just know, it's not the beefiest shoe, so like solid six, maybe a seven with good insoles. Next I wanna talk about is board feel and the flip. So I will say that this shoe had a very nice board feel and a pretty solid flick. So like not like the greatest flick ever, like the City Cups I think maybe had a little bit more of a flick advantage, but for a cup sole, one of the best flicks I've ever experienced in a cup sole shoe. Once again, I don't know if it just has to do with the way that this goes up a little bit more or what's going on with this, but this isn't wearing down at all and I feel like it has really good flick when I flick this shoe. It just feels right. It just feels like I have control. It feels like it's the right amount of flick too. And then the board feel was also pretty solid. I remember it's not a super thick shoe. There's not a lot going on in the insole, but it does have a decent amount of board feel. I'd give it like a solid eight. I think with the footprints, they definitely dull it down a little bit more. So for me, it brought it down to like a seven, but uh, straight out of the box, I'd say solid eight for board feel too. It's a really, it definitely gives you a good amount of control, or at least I felt like it did. So then last general pros and cons of the shoe. There's not too much else to say. I think the laces were like a weird con. Like it was just, they feel like a regular lace material, maybe a little bit more plasticky, but I did, I don't love the way that this lacing system works. Like this little V shape down here, just felt really hard to kind of get it tight. And even when I would tighten it a lot, it just felt weird. Like it was either super tight and overly tight, or it was like not tight enough at all. Like I could never get it the perfect amount. That was definitely weird. The shoe's a beast. It breaks in really, really well. Once again, just reiterating, reiterating that, I do think this shoe will last you quite a bit. And then I do think it looks cool. It's like a slimmer profile shoe. So if you like slimmer profiles, this is good. It also has these little like edges here in the back, like a lot of, um, it has like a lot of ridges in the back of the heel sole. So I feel like that's really good for like stopping or like if you're a big heel flipper, that, that helps. But yeah, not too much going on other than I've already mentioned. So final thoughts, would I buy the shoe again? I would be curious to try it in suede. I think that if they had a bigger tongue and it was more cushiony and they fixed the laces, then yes, because I do like this heel. I do like the sole. I do like how durable it is. Hopefully it would last just as much with the suede. 
but uh, I would give it another shot. I just, the tongue, it's, I can't do it. <laughs> the tongue is the biggest bummer for me on this shoe. It just doesn't work for me. I'm being super nitpicky, but I've also skated a lot of shoes. So for me to skate a shoe a second time, it has to have a lot of good stuff going on. And this did, but there's just a few very small deal breakers for me that you might not actually care about at all. I'll leave my thoughts there. If you've tried this shoe, you have any questions, please leave those in the comments and I will get back to you. If you did like this video, feel free to subscribe or like the video as well. I did include some clips at the end so y'all can see what the shoe looks like in action, but that's pretty much it. I appreciate y'all. See you next time.